Chapter 181 Agreement You are listening at NovelFull.audio Give me one good reason to believe you, I've known these men for decades, while you are an outsider, why should I trust your words over theirs and insult their pride by having them investigated? Their years of service mean something to me. I don't consider the warnings of the monarch of the One Night Clan to be empty words. But I don't have it in me to question the integrity of my own people. If there were really dark faction loyalists in my camp, there would be some honest member to have reported it to me over all these years. But I have not received one such report and that is what bothers me the most. Because the only way this is true, is if more than 90% of my council is infected which is a scary outcome for me to swallow. I take these men's advice to run my country, to form my policies and to enforce my laws. If what you say is true God Shikuni, then I have failed as a monarch. Thor said as his voice sounded empty when he spoke these words. The question that Thor posed before Shikuni today was a diplomatic nightmare for any individual to approach, as there was no right answer to his question as either way the answer was going to hurt Thor. Rudra felt a bit for the muscle man, in the end his faith towards his subordinates was admirable and something Rudra could relate with. Should there be a day when someone informed him that his elites were no longer loyal to him and that his best friend Karna was betraying him, he would be disturbed by that as well and probably dismiss it as a bogus claim no matter how credible the source of the information was, because he had been through thick and thin with Karna. Shaking his head, Rudra said, the angels have these truth orbs, I'm sure you know about them. For beings below tier 6 they are impossible to be fooled while if one uses divine essence to influence the decision the orb turns murky white indicating interference. I can most likely convince them to lend us one, and you can use it to question the council. If they are loyal to you and the Thunder Nation they will not mind being questioned over their integrity, especially knowing that as a result of this round of questioning they get to free up the planets occupied by me and force me to pay war indemnity should I be wrong. I will leave the decision up to them now. Checkmate. Rudra had woven a beautiful trap with words that the ministers could no longer escape. The conditions Rudra offered for going through a simple round of questioning were much greater than what the Thunder Nation obtained in return as anyone who declined the proposal would automatically seem guilty. The dark faction loyalists began to panic as a few who had nothing to hide accepted the plan and voiced their public acceptance of it while the majority of the crowd remained silent and in thought just as Rudra knew that they would. I don't think this is the best idea my lord, I mean how can we know if the orb is working properly? How can we trust the outsider? I mean surely there is no need for this round of questioning, he has killed a councilman in this very chamber before your very eyes. He doesn't deserve to live lord, don't you agree? A man spoke while visibly sweating as he rubbed his hands in nervousness, oh, a mentally retarded councilman how rare, Rudra commented as he chuckled at his own joke every concern that he raised is common sense, Monarch Thor. The orb's authenticity is not an issue when Monarch Augustus one night and Monarch Michael sign a system document guaranteeing its authenticity. As for the device calibration, you can test it yourself and for the questioning you can do it yourself. I will not give you the questions, I will not interfere and I will not influence the outcome. You be the judge, you do the questioning and you do the analysis. I don't think there can be foul play involved if these conditions are met. Rudra said with authority as every mumbling council member was silenced after listening to his proposal. Rudra had really not left any way out for the dark faction supporters for today it felt like a through and through checkmate for them. Thor waited for a good five minutes for any objections to be raised, but there were none. So in the end he decided to accept Rudra's proposal and made him sign a system contract that stated that should his accusations turn out to be false he would be forced to return the territories he had captured and pay a war indemnity of five trillion gold coins as well as serve as the northern commander with an unpaid salary for next 100 years. Thor sighed in relief when Rudra did sign the contract as that made it clear to him that he indeed did not have malicious reasons to attack his territory hence he could let go of his anger towards him. Before leaving the council chamber, Rudra scanned the pale faces of many council members in the room as he went up to Thor and whispered in his ears to monitor all teleportation and escape attempts from the planet tonight.
Rudra's intuition told him that many cowards were going to flee the planet before the questioning ever began and that his theory would start to be proven true before the orb was ever secured. Thor gave Rudra a silent nod, acknowledging the private advice as Rudra walked back out of the Thunder Nation Council on his own two feet before disappearing from the planet. If Rudra's analysis was to come true, Lucifer was in for a sleepless night tonight. Forward slash forward slash forward slash this bonus chapter is sponsored by top patron Cervantes91, please thank him in the comments for this one forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 182 Old Promises You are listening at novelfull.audio. Rudra returned to Planet Radiance with a bang. The man had unbelievable swagger around him, as the tier 8 monarch Augustus one night and the patriarch of the entire one night family. Patricia one night stood waiting for his glorious return. Can you please not swing your shoulders when you walk? It's narcissistic as fuck. Patricia said, pretending to be disgusted by Rudra's power walk. My child, Augustus said with a smile as Rudra happily narrated his exploits at the Thunder Nation to the duo. Augustus was slightly shocked that Rudra killed Mavi so ruthlessly and that he managed to convince Thor to investigate his own counsel, as Augustus was once again convinced of Rudra's prowess as a one-man army. So let me get this part again. You walked into his council and killed his councilman in front of him. Patricia asked, not able to wrap her head around Rudra's flexing. Huh, the ant was too loud, Rudra said in response as he made a V sign with his fingers. Wow, what's next, you unite the monarchies under your foot and become the undisputed ruler of the universe. Patricia asked sarcastically as Rudra rubbed his nose and said, I might if I'm free. Patricia shook her head, she was done with this brother of hers. Apparently his talent was only matched by his narcissism. Patricia on the other hand updated Rudra about the situation of transfer of earthlings and how 40% of the population had already been shifted safely, including his family. Rudra was extremely glad for this, for the safety of his family meant everything for him. Has Max returned? Rudra asked Patricia who shook her head and replied no, Rudra did send an emissary to his university to inform him to come back to earth so that he could be informed about the new changes but apparently he was not at his university and not checking the messages on his mobile phone. Where is that kid? Rudra asked, as Patricia clapped her hands and called in her servants who handed her a report. I knew you would want to know, apparently the answers you need are in Vanaheim. The caretaker appointed to Max from the St. Maximus clan, Severus is in Vanaheim with his two friends. I believe they have the answers you want. Patricia said as Rudra felt his heart beat a little faster at the mention of Vanaheim. Do you think she would be there? Rudra asked Patricia, his voice sounding shy, I know she is there, Patricia replied as Rudra blushed and smiled. Well, guess I'm off to Vanaheim then. I need to bring a few family members back home, Rudra said to Patricia, who rolled her eyes at him but smiled nonetheless. Even though her brother was an idiot, he was undeniably powerful and talented, and a pure-hearted person that she loved a lot. Meanwhile Max, today, we go on a hike, pack your stuff and be ready, we will most likely be gone for three months, Kremeth said as he dropped a sudden bombshell on his three disciples and Rhea. Where are we going? Rhea asked, as Kremeth chose to ignore her question. I'm only taking my disciples, you are free to enjoy your life while we are gone Dragon Queen. Kremeth said eventually as Rhea snorted fire in reply. As if. She said as she shrunk to human form and decided to climb on Kremeth's shell alongside the rest of them. Dot Kremeth seemed to not mind this outcome as after enabling defensive formations around his house, he used his speed to take off as he took the group to a special place. In his eternity spent inside the dungeon, Kremeth had made 2.3 special places inside the dungeon only accessible to him where he had spent decades at once. One such place was Mungdal Lake, a beautiful place that he had carved out by hollowing out a mountain. The place was perfect for training someone like Max who was allergic to sunlight as the only source of light in the region was the glowing herb species that grew at the bottom of the lake and gave the whole surroundings a light bluish hue. 
The location was sealed off by special spells and was home to many exquisite plant species that bloomed in a moist environment devoid of sunlight. When the group arrived at the location everyone was speechless for a few moments as they tried to absorb the unique aura of the place. Max's night vision skills allowed him to be very comfortable in the low lighting of the area while Sebastian struggled a little to notice objects that were far away. Welcome to Mundo Lake, this is the location where I shall transform your useless fighting styles into meaningful ones. Kremeth said as he randomly threw a kunai knife at Max who was startled a bit and was bruised at his arms as a result of the attack. Point three forty. Hey! What was that for? Max complained as Kremeth continued his speech. For the next three months you will be under constant attack from me. Sleeping, training or cooking you can be attacked at any instance and for every time you are bruised you shall miss a meal. I will teach you basics of fighting skills like parry, counter, block, stuff that every warrior must master but does not, but it won't be easy on you. It will be extremely difficult psychologically and the hunger will probably make your mind go numb should you miss your meals for more than two days straight. But the cruel method of training aside, you will be exceptional warriors with trained senses by the end, that much I can promise. Kremeth said as he threw three kunai knives at once, bruising all three of his disciples. No lunch for all three of you today, he said as the three of them looked at each other understanding that they were f asterisk 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 this time. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This bonus chapter is sponsored by lovely patron, Sister Savanthi, please thank her in the comments for this one forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 183 Lucifer is the only winner you are listening at novelfull.audio. Present day, Max and Patricia, if my brother solved the issue with the Thunder Nation then why did he still die? What did he do to turn the Queen against him? This makes no sense. Max said as he sighed heavily listening to Patricia's tale. According to Patricia's words the conflict between the Thunder Nation and the One Knights was sure to be resolved after his brother's heroics in the court. Something about this story did not add up for Max. Patricia gazed into the distance as she began mustering the strength needed to narrate the next part of this story. It was a truly tragic tale as to what happened next and it pained her heart greatly. The next three months were arguably the happiest months of your brother's life. He visited Vanaheim and reunited with Ruby in what could be considered one of the most heartwarming reunion stories. Rudra was like a teenager in love all over again as for the first time in a long time he spent time off from work doing nothing but taking long walks in the palace gardens of Vanaheim and making love to Ruby day and night. Although Ruby was a little sad that it took Rudra a full year to come see her after Omega ended, Rudra won over her heart quickly and made her forget all the pain as the couple was extremely happy. If there was one person he kept tabs on when he was in Vanaheim it was you as even there, he was constantly checking in on you with Ruby on her treasure orb as he would often comment on your training and fighting style improvements as he proudly watched you work hard to be fair he did love you a lot Max, maybe even more than he loved his wives and children. Patricia said as Max felt his throat being choked up and unable to take in air. On the other hand, just like Rudra had predicted, Many dark faction loyalists tried to flee the country before the assessment began and were caught by the patrol forces on guard as Thor got a big reality check about the state of his nation that day. When the truth orb was finally delivered and the tests were concluded, Thor found out a lot of disturbing facts about his kingdom that made him fly into rage. Apparently Lucifer had orchestrated the infiltration of the Thunder Nation and it was a project ongoing for 400 years. It started slowly, with one light faction dwarven blacksmith who had sworn loyalty to Lucifer in dot exchange for rare materials that he needed to win a forging contest for the spot of Thor's chief blacksmith in the council. The blacksmith then slowly shielded and nurtured other dark faction loyalists and secretly groomed them to take administrative positions as the group slowly and carefully expanded their influence within the Thunder Nation which over time grew to the levels that it reached before Rudra foiled their plans. Thor was naturally furious learning all this as one after another their crimes were exposed before him. 
Not only did the corrupt government under him worship Lucifer but they actually ran three secret teleportation centers built on three different planets which they used as a direct channel to let dark faction troops infiltrate the light faction territory. Hundreds of thousands of tons of natural resources were smuggled to the dark faction alongside many native women, children and beast species that were to be used as slaves within the dark faction territory. On the capital planet itself, right under Thor's nose they had built a secret Lucifer temple where they gathered and worshipped the Dark Lord every seven days. Apparently the corrupt officials were using the light faction citizens' income to supplement dark faction ambitionist projects back in Lucifer's territory and gathering intelligence on various light faction organizations by having them infiltrated by spies. The overall damage that the dark faction had done to Thor's kingdom was incalculable and Thor was deeply ashamed of this oversight by him. He mercilessly purged the traitors and did not spare their families either as he sent his army out to destroy any known dark faction based and secret infrastructure projects as he himself demolished the Lucifer Temple. The task of rebuilding his entire legislative, executive and judiciary wing of the government was tough for Thor as his territory threatened to spiral out of control with so many governmental positions now empty as Thor reached out to other monarchs for support in this tumultuous time. The One Knight family most graciously sent many experts to help him restabilize his region along with military and financial aid, as your brother even sent the entire true elite guild along with its guildmaster Karna to help Thor out. Patricia said as Max nodded, sending his guild out to help did sound exactly like something his brother would do as Max understood fully well that when it came to managing territories the elites were no amateurs having controlled vast territories in Omega prior to this job. However, everything in this story up to this point sounded like it was progressing in a positive direction, which made Max wonder where did it all go wrong. So where did it all go wrong? Max asked in a raspy voice, he felt like the story had hit the highest point and the downturn was going to start now. It all went wrong a few months later when Rudra received the happiest and saddest news of his life in one day. The happy news was that Ruby was pregnant with his child, a piece of news that made the entire planet Radiance hang lanterns outside their house to show their joy and celebration. However, just as your brother was dancing in joy at the news of being a father of three, his joy was cut short with the news about the death of his sworn brother Karna. Patricia said as Max's eyes widened in disbelief, Guildmaster Karna was dead. Thor had passed out a decree that all dark faction loyalists and their families were to be hunted down, and irrespective of the family's crimes or involvement into being a betrayer of the faction, if they were found associated by blood with a traitor they were to be executed. While every other enforcer followed this decree, the kind-hearted guildmaster from Earth often let the family members slip by as he looked the other way in matters regarding their punishments. When the devil Lucifer got wind of this, he devised a nefarious plan as he brainwashed and controlled a small five-year-old human girl whose father was charged with the crime of human trafficking. When the authorities beheaded the father, the little girl cried vehemently and begged Karna to spare her, as the kind-hearted man unable to watch the young girl's plight decided to spare her and provide her with temporary food and shelter. Lucifer deliberately did this and we suspect that he was the man who leaked the news about Karna shielding the family of the traitors to Thor, as the angry monarch upon hearing this piece of news came hammer blazing into Karna's home one day demanding explanation. Thor's state of mind was fragile after the betrayal of so many of his close councilmen and he saw Karna's defiance as an act of dissent. Thor demanded Karna to give up the young girl to face judgment and had there been a weak man facing Thor's wrath at that moment he would have probably done so in a breath's time, however, Karna refused. Karna said, if you want to punish the innocent, you can do it over my dead body, a comment that I highly doubt he meant literally, but the volatile Thor took it literally as he said, very well, and proceeded to unleash an attack that killed both Karna and the girl he was shielding. Was it a fleeting moment of poor judgment? Was it anger? Was it Thor's fear of betrayal acting up? Nobody knows the answers to those questions, what everyone did know however was that Thor killed Rudra's sworn brother. Patricia said as she sighed heavily as Max covered his gaping mouth in disbelief. Max did not need to listen to the rest of the story, he could imagine it already. His brother was not a man who was going to take Karna's death lying down, 
the intentions, the moment, the opponent nothing mattered to him. Since Thor had killed Karna, Rudra was going to come after Thor. Yo. Your brother's wrath was uncontainable. Me, the patriarch, monarch Michael, Serial, Raphael, Emperor Cervantes, King Hades, everyone came to counsel Rudra out of the move he was going to make. Both his wives begged him to not go, as Ruby even used her unborn child as an emotional ploy to calm Rudra's wrath but nothing worked. At Karna's funeral, Rudra shook hands with the weeping Skyla and promised retribution for his brother's death. In the end your brother decided to challenge Thor in a fight to death inside the immortal arena. Patricia said as Max closed his eyes in defeat. Max was not sure if his brother was right or wrong in this challenge, whether Thor was truly wrong to be ruthless in killing the family members of traitors or whether Karna was truly deserving of death. All he knew was that Lucifer had knowingly pulled the strings from behind the scenes hoping for this exact outcome. In the end, the devil was the only winner. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This is the last chapter for 2022. I hope you all enjoyed it. It has been a wild year, from the completion of Strongest Guild Master to the rise of the Vampire God Book, but one thing that hasn't changed from 2021.2022 is you all's constant support for this series which is truly unbelievable and for which I'm very fortunate. There is a lot I want to say, so I'll probably move it to the author notes, do check them out before you flip over if possible. Otherwise, I'll see you on January 1st with 10 chapters. Five of them will go into expanding existing privilege, while five more will be released normally forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 184 Training You are listening at NovelFull.audio Past Timeline, Kremitha's Secret Cave, Blood Satiety 61%, Max was on the verge of losing his mind, he had not drank blood for two days now and his satiety had dropped fast. Kremeth had started to attack the three disciples of his day and night, and as a result Max had only had one meal in the last three days while having starved for two days prior to that. Sebastian, who had not eaten for five days now, had recently gotten a strength debuff of 50% for being too hungry, making his movements even more sluggish as his stamina regeneration hit a rock bottom. Max was now on the verge of descending into his primordial madness and Kremeth showed no intentions of slowing down the training of the kids. We are going to die, we are definitely going to die, Sebastian murmured weakly as his stomach made gurgling sounds. The duo was practicing to improve the proficiency of their skills non-stop but were unable to focus on the practice at hand with all their senses being heightened fearing an attack. In Max's opinion this was the most horrible training method ever, as the hunger and the fear made him unable to focus on the training at hand which made his progress slow, while he did not feel himself being any closer to understanding the concepts of counter, parry, or block that Kremeth wanted him to learn. SHUA SHUA.159.500 Ack, goddammit, fuck, both Max and Sebastian were cut by Kremeth's dagger as the duo cursed at the old turtle. Apparently when they were talking to each other, they were distracted for a split second and it was that split second that Kremeth exploited to attack the kids. No dinner for you both today, Kremeth declared as Max looked at his satiety and sighed. It was inevitable now, he was going to lose control of his body once again. If I attack you like you are a juicy fruit, please don't hold it against me, Max said as he continued his training, feeling his stomach groan and rumble in complaint. Sebastian covered his boobs with his hands as he feared Max would start sucking on them for blood, not understanding that Max was not interested in such stuff. Max felt it vividly, the moment his blood satiety dropped below 60% as he felt his brain go into auto mode. When the blood satiety dropped below 60% for Max, it was like an involuntary response for him which he was conscious of but could not control. Just like he could hold his breath consciously for 3.4 minutes but could not force his lungs to not breathe until he was unconscious, he could try and fight his primordial instincts once his satiety dropped below 60% but it was a losing battle. Max bared his fangs, as his pupils dilated, he began searching the surroundings for sources of immediate danger, but finding none his attention went to searching for food. 
Max looked at the sleeping Rhea and decided he wanted to drink dragon blood for dinner today, but as he approached the dragon queen with a salivating tongue she decided to petrify him with her gaze alone as Max unwillingly kneeled before the superior beast. Hisss Max bared his fangs at Rhea as the dragon queen turned to look at Kremeth as she said, Your boy has become a beast from hunger, Kremeth walked towards Max, as Max tried to attack the turtle but was pitifully defeated and restrained as Kremeth pinned him to the ground and said, If you want to eat breakfast tomorrow, you will practice your blood manipulation skill today and not let me hit you till the morning you understand. Gossus Max hissed like a vampire in response as he tried to struggle violently against Kremeth's grip but it was to no avail. He was powerless in front of the old turtle, there was nothing he could do. You dwarf, and you dragonling, go practice near the resting dragon queen. You beast boy, go practice in the corner alone, Kremeth said as he let Max go with a kick to his bum. Max turned and lunged back at Kremeth but was sent flying back with a kick as the old turtle looked at him expressionlessly. I said practice, now. Kremeth said angrily as Max felt shivers sent down his spine as he reluctantly scurried to the corner and began practicing his blood manipulation skill. This was the first time Max was in an environment where he was in his primordial instincts form but had no imminent danger lurking and no one he could hurt around. He was not dumb in this form and did understand what Kremeth tried to convey, but he was just not obedient in this form and had to be beaten senselessly to forcibly obey. In the end Max did start training his blood manipulation skill as Kremeth threw three daggers into the glowing lake, drawing blood from three dead fishes. Use the blood of the dead fish to kill more fish, Kremeth ordered Max, who struggled to collect the trickling blood from the dead fishes and use it as a weapon. Nonetheless, his training was much more efficient than when he did it consciously as in his primordial form, whatever Max learnt was fed directly into his muscle memory which was akin to months of regular training. Kremeth, who observed this phenomenon, knew that Max was unaware of his own gifts at the moment and that he as a teacher needed to help him a lot. While Kremeth oversaw Max's constant hissing and training, he felt a peering gaze over his shoulders from afar, as if some celestial eyes were gazing on him. Kremeth turned and looked directly at the spot he felt the gaze coming from as he maintained his stoic expression as he looked there. Although Kremeth did not know who was gazing upon them, he knew he was not afraid of whoever it was. It was Rudra, looking upon Max with his omniscient eyes as he tried to understand the background of the master training his brother. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Happy New Year Bonus Chapter 110th Forward Slash Forward Slash Forward Slash Chapter 185 Way of the Wind You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Two months later, Max's satiety finally recovered above 60% as he regained clarity of thought. Gah, cough cough, Max coughed up some blood as he looked at the dead yellow dragon corpse in his hands and panicked a little. The fuck, Max said wondering what the hell was happening as he scanned around the cave he was in, finding out that he was in the same place he last remembered being before his memory became hazy. Max's eyes met with Sebastian's who instantly shivered and bent on his knees as he said, Please don't eat me, I'm your friend Sebastian, why will I eat you? Are you mad? Max asked Sebastian, who slowly lifted his beard to show Fong marks underneath. You did all this to me, yet you say why will I eat you? Sebastian asked in hyperbole as Max instantly felt guilt rising up his stomach. How long was I out for? Max asked Sebastian as his eyes found a now much larger Miracle trying to pretend she was a rock in front of Max. Is that you, Miracle that am why God you've grown so big? Max exclaimed seeing the now two feet long Miracle who had started to grow solid scales on her body. Miracle slowly uncurled herself as she looked into Max's eyes, trying to confirm he was sane again. You were out for two months now, Miracle replied in a childish voice as Max was pleasantly surprised to see her talk. Good Lord Miracle, you can talk now. Haha <laughs> you learned bipedal English, I'm impressed. Max said as he chuckled a little and resumed sucking the blood of the dead dragon he was sucking before, the delicious sweet taste making his taste buds dance in joy. I'm called Mira now, I chose a system name after reaching tier 1. 
Also you should take a bath, you stink, Mira said as Max was dumbfounded by her response. The little dragon girl that was shy and loved belly tickles was gone, replaced by a confident young dragon. Max smelled his armpits and immediately felt like puking his stomach out, he smelled absolutely putrid, like sweat, dirt, blood and bacteria all mixed together. Max quickly drank blood till his satiety returned to peak 100% before he took off his robes and took a dive in the pure glowing lake in front. Immediately all the fishes swam away from Max as if he was cancer as dirt and blood visibly parted from his body in the clear lake as he continued to swim about. Max rubbed his body with his hands, trying to get as much grime off as possible, as Sebastian and Mira watched from a distance. You think this was worth defying Master Kremeth? Sebastian asked Mira, it's worth it, his blood manipulation skill had become too powerful. Yesterday he immobilized me with his skill and proceeded to bury his fangs in my tail. If mother was not present to save me, I think he would have drained all the blood in my body. Mira replied as Sebastian shuddered just thinking about it. Max's growth was rapid in the past two months with Kremeth constantly monitoring and mentoring him in his primordial form. His brainwash and blood manipulation skill reached advanced mastery level in what could only be considered as a rocket speed of mastering skills. But unfortunately with the increase in strength came no increase in mental stability as his beastly behavior continued to be out of control with him trying to bite into Sebastian and Mira at every possible chance. Sebastian had already been reduced to a pile of bones losing over 17 kilograms in last two months. It was only in the past week that he secured two meals a day for seven consecutive days, otherwise he was regularly starving. Who did it? Who fed the beast? Kremeth roared in anger when he returned to the cave with fresh herbs only to find Max sane and swimming in the pond again. Hey, who are you calling a beast? Max shouted back in response but was met with glares from both Mira and Sebastian which made him shut dot up. No food for the two of you for three days, Kremeth gave the verdict as Mira and Sebastian sighed in defeat. Although having no food for three days was bad, it was not nearly as bad as sharing a living space with a primordial vampire maniac. Check your stats, do some introspection then come talk to me, I need to consciously teach you consciously about the way of the wind, Kremeth said as Max frowned and checked his stat panel. Max was dumbfounded to see he had gained seven levels and had improved in mastery over various skills. The most notable improvement was with his brainwash and blood manipulation, skill which had reached advanced mastery. Max did not remember practicing either of these skills, nor did not remember getting the new skill, Way of the Wind, but what blew Max's mind away was the fact that his newly obtained skill, Way of the Wind, had an ancient grade attached to it. Brainwash, advanced. Control the minds of your chosen target with varying success rate. 100% success rate for opponents with intelligence stat 50% below your stat. 80% success rate for opponents with intelligence stat 30% below your stat. 10% success rate for opponents with intelligence stat 10% below your stat. 1% success rate for opponents with similar intelligence stat. Note. You can now control multiple opponents at once. The success rate may become lower if the opponent has mental manipulation resistance. Blood manipulation, advanced. The bloodline skill of the primordial vampire clan, thought to be lost with time. It has varying applications primarily involving the use of blood. Subskills unlocked. Blood explosion. Make any opponent who is two tiers below you explode at a mere touch. Blood shield. Use blood to act as a solid shield against incoming attacks. Blood arrows. Create and control blood arrows to attack opponents. Blood spear. Create and control blood spear up to a 100 meters range. Blood chain. Use chains made from hardened blood that are as strong as iron to immobilize your enemy. Blood slash. Create sharp blades from blood that can tear through wind to injure your enemy. Blood heal. 
use blood to quickly regenerate and heal allies suffering from bleeding slash internal organ damage. Note. All skills need a minimum of 1.7 liters of blood pool to activate. Max watched the evolution of his basic blood manipulation skill with horror, he had unlocked so many subskills from his main skill that shocked even his own self. However, his new obtained skill was even more shocking. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. New Year bonus 2 out of 10. Enjoy. Please find attached character stat panel in author notes below forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 186 Way of the Wind, 2, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Way of the Wind, Ancient, Level 1. You have mastered the first level of the ancient skill, Way of the Wind from the Turtle God Kremeth, you can now detect incoming attacks from the surrounding wind disturbances. Max read the skill description and could not understand what it meant until he felt a slight wind disturbance coming his way. SHUA Max reflexively caught an incoming dagger thrown at high dot speed towards him by Kremeth even though he never saw it coming. How? Max wondered as he realized that he had stepped upon something very unique and very powerful. What is this skill? Max asked Kremeth, who gave the young man a rare grin. It's the skill that is the basis of my entire fighting style. There are two strongest defensive techniques in the universe. One is used by the Archangel Serial, and the second one is used by me. Dot it's an ancient skill that has seven levels, with the sixth and seventh level only available to me because I'm the inheritor of the Veu, Astra, Weapon of the Wind God, but anyone can theoretically master the other five levels, that is if they have the skill manual of course. When I started teaching you the way of the wind, I did not expect you to actually be able to grasp the technique so fast. Maybe it was your bloodline and heightened survival instincts that helped you, maybe it was your natural talent, but you somehow understood the concepts of sensing the wind and now you have successfully cultivated a sixth sense. It's a perception skill that aids in defensive tasks, it's a skill that will allow you to never be ambushed, never put into a dilemma as to where an incoming illusionary attack is coming from, as you will be able to sense minute imperfections in the wind field around you to understand exactly how the world around you works. Naturally when you are a god who starts fighting in space, this skill will be less useful at level 1 but you will learn higher forms of mastery by then. Kremeth said as Max found his mind blown away by the practical applications of the skill he had just learned. Max could not believe the amount of progress he had made in the two months his subconscious took over, it was like he had made two years worth of progress in just two months, having fundamentally evolved as a warrior. Come spar with me, Kremeth said as Max began fighting with Kremeth understanding his new powers and adjusting to his new strengths. Max could not wrap a finger around it as to how he was able to sense Kremeth's attacks without ever seeing them. It was like he had a new sensory organ that allowed him to track movement without having the need to see enemy attacks as just from wind sensations alone. Even when Kremeth used Asiva's attack illusionary daggers, where six daggers were fake and one was real Max knew exactly which was the real one although all of them looked different through sight. Eventually midway through the fight Max just closed his eyes as he let his sensations guide him, and he found that even without his eyes his battle performance was not dipping at all and he was able to maintain his defense against Kremeth at the same pace. This was until Kremeth brewed a windstorm around Max, messing with his senses completely and sending him into overdrive as Max could no longer function normally causing attacks from all angles to land on him. More senses is not always a good thing. If you have more senses that you rely on then there are more ways to fool you. Your senses are only a tool, how you use them is up to you, although the technique is cool, if seen through anyone can exploit it easily. Please be more sensible than to close your eyes mid-battle. Don't insult my name in the outside world as your teacher with this stupidity. There is a reason why evolution made more and more species be able to see rather than being able to send wind disturbances, it's because the former is more reliable. Use the wind to make faster decisions and detect incoming attacks where you are not looking, to have no blind spots in your perception, but otherwise your sight is your main ally understand. Kremeth asked Max who nodded vehemently Kremeth was very practical in his teaching approach and his practical lessons were easy to understand. 
Although Max detested his cowardly ways, he acknowledged the effort the turtle took in teaching them and genuinely appreciated his knowledge and efforts. Staying in the dungeon was proving to be a very wise choice for Max as inside he was progressing by leaps and bounds. Good, now since that's clear from today you start practicing the skill the block. Kremath said as he took an axe and chopped a nearby shrub until only a two centimeters thick stick was left of its already thin stem. Kremath then proceeded to tie a large boulder to the ceiling with a steel cable the boulder was easy 2.3 tons in weight, about 3.4 cars combined and Kremath lifted it like it was nothing. For your first stage of training you will learn palm blocking, you will push this large boulder beyond this line then run back and block it without moving a single centimeter while blocking it. For the second stage, you will do the same but block it with this small stick without breaking it. Kremath proceeded to demonstrate both scenarios as Max stared at the small 2 cm stick that did not break wide-eyed and wondered how the hell did it not break. You, dwarf. Kremath called out Sebastian who sheepishly looked at his master, since you are already practicing 10,000 sword cuts techniques, your job is to produce 50,000 sticks of this exact dimensions every day. Kremath said as he tossed Sebastian the demo stick. Sebastian looked at the thin long and frail stick and wondered how he would produce 50,000 of these daily. The amount of precision and control it would take to achieve something like that was not something that Sebastian was currently capable of. From day one Kremath's bias towards training Max was clear, but he did not neglect Sebastian's training at all. In fact, Sebastian had a training that was usually much harder than Max and although Max progressed by leaps and bounds, Sebastian's growth was actually even more impressive than Max's. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. New Year bonus March 10th, enjoy forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 187 block you are listening at novel full dot audio. Over the next week, Max regularly broke both his arms while training the block move. The training was so intense that he actually got strength, constitution and endurance stat point bonuses from keeping at it daily, but the truly difficult aspect of the training was the willpower. Every time that Max faced the incoming boulder knowing full well he did not have the necessary strength or skill to stop it, he had to steal his mind to stop the boulder with all that he got. Every day Max would break his arm bones and every day Rhea would heal him up, as even while sleeping he started to dream about the boulder and how badly he wanted to stop it. After 14 days, Max's palm prints were visible on the large rock as it became abundantly clear as to how Max was approaching the problem. On the first two days Max had experimented a lot, he had tried to stop the boulder by applying force at the top, he had tried to apply force by trying a wide grip and trying to stop it from the sides, while he also tried to use his legs and stop it from the bottom, but nothing worked. Dot in the end he realized that spreading his legs at shoulder width and applying force with both his palms at the center, with the palms separated at nearly the shoulder width as well was the best stance possible to approach this problem. Max was practically learning the basics of the block skill instead of learning it from a manual, although he did not understand why Kremeth was making him go through all this trouble instead of just giving him the skill and making him improve on its mastery. What Max did not know was that stumbling upon a skill naturally made one a master of the skill as opposed to just learning the skill where one would start from beginner and have to comprehend his way forward. Experimenting, failing and learning was the best way to build fundamentals of fighting as while one could be fine if they did not know the most advanced attacks in a battle, but without the basics a warrior was fucked in any fight they took. Although Max did not understand it directly, he was slowly understanding the very essence of the block skill with his repeated failures as his progress was visible to Kremeth. The boy is talented, no question about that, Kremeth said to Rhea who was observing Max train as well. That he is, a rare genius in the body of a barbarian, Rhea commented as she could see Max's motion improving. 30 more days before he fully gets the physical block I think, Rhea said as Kremeth agreed with the assessment. Had it been an average individual they would take about 6 months to get through this stage but Max's progress was rapid, it was like he had devoted himself fully to the task of stopping the rock and every day his approach to the problem improved. It is truly so simple, yet so difficult to realize naturally, Kremeth said as Rhea chuckled, 
the two of them had already comprehend the laws of the universe and such skills were trivial in their eyes, but seeing mortals struggle with it was still fascinating in their eyes. How are the dragons coming for the boys' ceremony? Rhea asked Kremeth as she reminded him that the day of Max's racial transformation ceremony was drawing close. All the resources are ready but his mind is still fickle, converting him now would only hurt him. He is too proud for things he has not achieved himself, he has a shitten of luck to have brought him to this point in life while his hard work and humbleness has prevented his downfall but his mindset is still that of a kid, he doesn't have the edge needed to make him a standout warrior. But I have a fix in mind for that. Once he masters the block, I will give him a reward that will fix his temperament for life, after that we can go forward with the ceremony, Kremeth said as Rhea frowned, the old turtle was wise but his training methods were sometimes way too cruel for kids. Rhea's motherly heart bled for the three students seeing their harsh training lives, but her rational mind of a queen knew that it was all necessary. What Rhea was most concerned about at the moment was Myra's growth. While her baby was already into the level 70s growing at an incredible pace, Half of her EXP was being freeloaded by Max who had grown seven levels while doing nothing but training in the cave. It was Mira who was out hunting every day, it was her sharpening her skills as a predator and learning new attacks as Kremeth taught her which opponents to pick on and which to avoid and the correct approach of attacking an opponent. Although Kremeth molded her into his own line of thought, Rhea made sure to teach Mira the dragon's way from time to time so that when she finally left the cave and took her place amongst dragon elites she would not be looked down upon by her fellow clansmen. Mira enjoyed the hunt so much, she would sneak out at night to hunt opponents while she had an acute fondness for killing other dragon babies. She had already killed seven dragon children when their mothers were not noticing but in the process of doing so she made many opponents in the form of mature dragon mothers. If it were not for Kremeth who kept an eye on her, she would already be killed thrice in the last week itself. If one were to describe Myra's personality it could only be described with the word, cold, as the dragon princess did not care or sympathize with any creature except those who shared a cave with her. Even amongst them, she only truly loved her mother and Max while she was cordial with Kremeth and Sebastian. Rhea had no idea where Mira developed such a temperament from, but she felt that she was to blame for it partly. While most dragon babies were still playing and rolling in the grass learning how to shoot first, her baby was already level 70 and training with ancient gods to become more powerful. Mira had enjoyed childhood for a grand total of two days since birth where she played with Max and Sebastian, otherwise it was only training and killing in her life. For better or for worse, this was how her baby had turned out to be forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n new year's bonus chapter 4 of 10 enjoy forward slash forward slash forward slash chapter 188 asaiva and johnny you are listening at novel full dot audio meanwhile asaiva asaiva and severus had returned to the saint maximus clan home planet turin upon the beckoning of the patriarch sam saint maximus the St. Maximus sweepers working in the Kingsman clan had got information about a potential coup that was being formulated by the deputy general of the Kingsman clan against their patriarch Will Kingsman. Apparently Will after his exploits over the Paradis territory had upset a lot of military officials in his distribution of rewards. Many top officials felt like they were undervalued for their merits as the best rewards went to Will Kingsman's family members and friends who did not meritoriously participate in the war. This aggeviation had opened a unique opportunity for the St. Maximus clan when the deputy approached Sam for supplying the rebel group with supplies and weapons in return for them to secede back some parts of the Paradis territory to the St. Maximus clan as a show of goodwill when they successfully ousted the kingsmen. Usually, Sam would not take part in such coups, but the situation this time around looked extremely optimistic for the coup to be successful, and knowing the history between Severus's adopted daughter Asaiva and the Kingsman clan, Sam decided to call the two to assign them a secret mission. Sam knew that given the history between them and the Kingsman, those two would never betray him and never play the double game. For this very reason Sam was willing to make the two his ambassadors on ground zero, to oversee that the supplies and support provided were not misused and that the coup actually became a reality. Naturally, 
On paper he did not know about these events happening and should the coup fail and the two be caught, Sam made it clear that he was not going to bail them out of trouble. Explaining the risks and rewards of the mission fairly, Sam gave the two the option to accept or reject the proposal at will. Severus was doubtful, but Asiva with her heart long burning in the fire of revenge accepted the mission immediately. At the moment it appeared like little could go wrong with the mission, but still failure or success remained to be seen. Meanwhile Johnny, Johnny was having the time of his life as the commander of the Red Hands mercenary group, as under his leadership the group soared to greater and greater heights. Due to a series of unbelievably lucky encounters, Johnny was now on the cusp of entering the god realm of Tier 6 but it was during this period that a piece of disturbing news fell into his ears. One of his boys, the guildmaster of his previous guild, Karna, had been killed by the thunder monarch Thor, as this piece of news devastated the old Johnny's heart. My boy. How dare he hurt my boy, Johnny was enraged, his broken heart causing his temper to flare. Johnny ordered the Red Hands to stop all ongoing missions to hunt dark faction loyalists within the Thunder Nation at once as he recalled all of his men back and cut all diplomatic ties with the nation. According to his information sources, Rudra had challenged Thor to a death match in the Immortal Arena, while his previous guild the True Elites was in rage and shambles over the death of their beloved guildmaster. Temporarily, the guild secretary Amelia had taken over the role of guildmaster to stabilize the situation, but it was abundantly clear that the shoes of Karna were too big for her to fill with her having virtually no combat ability. The elites were like a family, and the death of the guildmaster made every guild member feel the pain of losing him strongly as anti.thor and anti. Thunder Nation feelings were strong within the group. Should Rudra give the order, the elites were ready to storm the capital of the Thunder Nation even if their lives were on the line, as their rage blinded their sense of judgment. Under such tumultuous times, the guild truly missed and desperately needed its longtime elder Johnny English to return, and it was for this reason only that Johnny too decided to step out of his seclusion and return home. One thing that was abundantly clear in Johnny's mind was that regardless of the fact that Rudra killed Thor or not, should Thor ever cross paths with him, dead or alive, Johnny would make sure that the god would say goodbye to being a man forever after their meeting. Two skills made Johnny skyrocket to the top of the Red Hand group hierarchy one was his infamous, ball-crushing, skill that he had perfected and the other was his, void form, technique that allowed him to become formless at will, making all physical, elemental and mana-based attacks useless on him in his void.formless form. Only mental attacks, soul attacks, and ghost attacks could damage Johnny in that form, but to counter this weakness Johnny had a, high, mental manipulation resistance. While immortals who had mastered the laws of the universe and had an understanding of spatial manipulation could still counter Johnny's skill before, his latest lucky encounter removed this defect from Johnny's portfolio. The current Johnny was untouchable from physical or elemental attacks that were charged with even divine essence which meant that not even most gods could hurt him now. With such a formidable man returning back to the elites from the shadows, chaos for the Thunder Nation was sure to bloom. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This is it guys, the moment you all have long been waiting for. Sir Johnny will finally step out of his isolation and reunite with the elites after Karna's death. For the long-time fans of the character, I can promise classic Johnny action ahead. For the new readers of this book, I hope to make you all fall in love with this character like the rest of us already do. Chapter 5 out of 10 of the New Year's bonus series, hope you all enjoy. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 189 No Other Way You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Contrary to Kremitha's prediction, Max learned physical block skill 10 days faster than expected. Blocking was very simple, in theory to stop an object in motion one only needed to apply an equal and opposite force to the object to nullify its motion. It was basically a matter of pure strength, had Max been tier 3 or stronger, he could have blocked the boulder with his eyes closed, but this is exactly where skills came into play. Max figured out that when instead of stopping the rock with rigidity he used a fluid motion of pulling his hands back along with the force of the rock, the load on his bones became considerably lower. 
Initially Max was trying to stop the rock with brute force, this made it so that all the pressure was being channeled through the bones in his arms which were as a result crumpling under the strength of the boulder. But when instead, Max engaged with the rock in a semi-extended state, the pressure began transmitting through the muscles instead and was distributed throughout his body which made it easier to block the boulder. When Max arrived at this conclusion the rest was very easy for him to grasp as he realized that by prolonging the time needed to stop the boulder and by putting his full body strength behind the boulder to stop it instead of only relying on upper body strength, Max realized that he could multiply his current strength to a level where he was able to stop the boulder without having to take a single step back. Through repeated attempts and failures he had grasped the concepts of center of mass, force distribution and impact distribution which were the fundamentals behind any blocking skill. Although Kremeth was internally impressed by Max's progress, externally he just threw a pile of sticks chopped up by Sebastian onto Max asking him to continue with the next stage of his training. Max was a bit disappointed at this, he had been excited to show Kremeth his progress and wished to hear a few words of encouragement from the old turtle but unfortunately he got none. This was Kremeth's way of teaching, he was never going to praise his students for anything they achieved no matter how significant it may be. Kremeth wanted his disciples to understand that small achievements in this universe meant nothing, even if they one day mastered a tier 9 skill capable of destroying entire solar systems, it was still only a minor ripple when compared to the vast universe. Picking up the sticks chopped by Sebastian, Max could see how much Sebastian had struggled to make them uniform. Many sticks had been recut and although he had tried his best to make them uniform, 5 out of 10 sticks were not of the same dimensions in any batch that Max picked up. Regardless, the size of the sticks was an issue he did not need to worry about as the only thing he had to do was to learn how to stop the boulder with one. As Max made his first attempt, the stick broke even before he was able to put any force into the blocking attempt as the brittle stick broke from the pressure of his grip alone. Max picked up three sticks at once and tried to grip them tightly at once, but all of the sticks broke with his hand grip alone as Max helplessly looked at Kremeth wondering how was he going to stop a boulder that took every fiber of muscle in his body to stop with a stick as brittle as the one in his hand. Meanwhile Johnny, Johnny entered Planet Radiance and was pleasantly surprised to see the new residents of Earthlings. The planet was not only much cleaner and greener, but the rivers were not polluted, the soil was not littered with plastic and the rain was not acidic. It was like humanity was given a chance to start with a clean slate and Johnny was very happy with this change. If the times were better, Johnny would have liked nothing more than to go on an exploration trip inside Radiance, just for fun but since times were as they were he walked straight for the elite headquarters on the planet. For the first time in a long time, Johnny wore his guild robes and put on the grey wolf insignia as he blended amongst the sea of elite players like he was one of them, walking through them unnoticed. The elite headquarters on Planet Radiance was built exactly like the one that they had back in Omega, inside Purple Haze City, as the place refreshed many old memories for Johnny. Seeing old faces like, Mediv, Cola, Rhino and Tank Johnny felt both proud and joyous until he walked into the guild hall and saw the casket in which Karna was being kept before his burial. Johnny saw Rudra on stage beside the casket while Skyla, Amelia, Yua, Naomi and Neatwit accompanied him. Dot one after other, the elites were walking up to the dead body to pay their respects as Johnny too waited patiently for his turn in line to see his old friend. When Johnny finally saw Karna's serene resting face, a stream of tears rolled down his face as a tsunami of rage and emotions boiled up in his heart. He felt a hand over his shoulder, and upon turning he saw a mildly smiling Rudra looking at him. We have missed you, Sir Johnny, Rudra said as he bowed respectfully to the elder, who bowed back in respect. A commotion erupted inside the guild when news of Johnny's return spread, as Johnny dutifully paid his respects to the dead and their family. After Johnny's return, Rudra called for an emergency elder meeting of the guild as Fatty Kalash, Neatwit, Amelia, Johnny, Mediv and Rudra met in the guild's conference room to discuss future plans. The atmosphere in the room was heavy, it was after a long time that an elder meeting had been called and the first one where Karna was not an attendee. Rage and vengeance were plastered over everyone's faces, yet it was Johnny who broke the silence first, the Thunder Nation has to become an elite nation. 
There is no other way. Johnny said with sadness and conviction as the eyes of others sparkled at the idea. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. New Year bonus 6 out of 10, enjoy. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 190 Rudra vs Thor You are listening at novelfull.audio. The arena of the gods, Thor's locker room, Thor did not wish to be in the immortal arena of gods today, he did not wish to kill Shikuni over nothing, but the latter had left him no other option. In Thor's mind there was no fear of facing Shikuni in a fair one. On point one battle, he was a tier 8 monarch, the hammer he wielded was forged from the densest alloy in the universe and was so heavy that gods with over 300,000 strength stats still struggled to wield it properly. In Thor's mind, Shikuni was a benefactor of the Thunder Nation, without him Thor would have never found out about the traitors hiding in his own kingdom and would have never understood the plight of his own kingdom which was the only reason he was regretful for this fight. Thor felt that Shikuni's attitude was unreasonable, he had even offered countless treasures to settle the matter of Karna's death even though he did not need to but the stubborn Shikuni was held dot bent on wanting vengeance. In Thor's mind, this behavior was not befitting of a god. Thor also loved Mavi, the man was like a brother to him and was the pillar of his empire, yet he let dot go of the grudge of Mavi's death, when Rudra came to his council to talk reason. Mavi was a tier 7 god. Karna was a tier 5 mortal. Even so, Thor was ready to apologize and even offer compensation for his death but Rudra would not take it. As Thor put his armor on, he steeled his mind into believing that Rudra deserved what was coming his way today. He had done everything possible to avoid this conflict, but since it could not be avoided then he was for sure not going to shy away from it either. Since Shikuni wanted a fight, Shikuni was going to get a fight. Since he was the challenged party, he got to set the terms of victory in this battle and since he wanted nothing from Shikuni post his defeat, he decided to keep the stakes as 100 gold coins. Meanwhile Rudra, in his locker room, Rudra had his eyes shut calmly as he listened to the roaring arena outside. 15,000 light faction gods, 7 monarchs, 12,000 dark faction gods, Lucifer and Satan were all present outside in the sitting arena waiting for Rudra to face Thor. It was the first time in history that a monarch had been challenged to fight in the immortal arena, as nobody outside believed that Rudra could walk out of this fight the winner. Rudra too understood full well that the decision to fight Thor today was a wrong one, he understood that the fight today was uncertain and he was the weaker party going into the fight. However, he also knew that he had to do it. If he did not fight Thor to the death over killing Karna then he would not be able to live with himself for centuries to come knowing that he let his brother's death go unavenged. He did not plan to die here today, but he was not afraid to risk his life either as he knew full well that his body had two treasures that would allow him to reincarnate even when he died. From the day he challenged Thor, many people tried to dissuade him from this fight. People that he trusted and respected all told him that this was foolish, and Rudra knew they were not wrong. But when he saw the perils of his elites, the pain and sadness in their eyes, he knew that as the patriarch of the elite family he needed to avenge this death. It was not until Johnny returned and the elder meeting was called that Rudra finally got the confidence that his path was the right path. Every individual in that room that day were ready to fight Thor knowing full well that they would not last a second against him in a fight. As if making Thor pay was not enough, the elites wanted to take over the entire Thunder Nation for revenge and that was exactly what they were going to do. Sir Johnny with his red dot hand group and the new guildmaster of the true elites guild Neatwit were both going to announce a joint attack against the Thunder Nation irrespective of the outcome of today's battle. It was for this reason, that Rudra knew that he needed to fight and for this reason that he knew he had to win, because whether or not his entire guild got closure over their guildmaster's death and whether or not they became rulers of an entire monarchy depended on whether or not Rudra was capable of slaying Thor here today. Rudra was at his most dangerous when he was fighting for the elites and today was one such fight. As he put his armor on he envisioned the battle that was going to come ahead. His biggest advantage over Thor today was that despite him being over 400 levels below Thor at 1775 versus the monarch's 2175, 
his stats were slightly superior to those of Thor. His biggest weakness against Thor today was that the other party had access to tier 8 attacks that he was incapable of and a better understanding of the laws of the universe. Since potions were not allowed while fighting in the immortal arena, Rudra had to tread carefully with his HP as once those points were lost they would be very difficult to recover. Since the inception of the guild, Rudra had one motto for his organization. One for all, all for one, it was the motto he lived by and the motto that binded his guild into one family. Since one of his family members had been killed, today he had to retaliate. Hence even though there was nobody around him to chant alongside him today, Rudra clutched his two swords the Grim Reaper and the Excalibur and shouted loudly, one for all, all for one, go elites go. Before running onto the arena, in front of friends and foes alike. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Chapter 7 out of 10 for New Year's bonus, enjoy. Forward slash forward slash forward slash.